long as we've got three wars going, America needs to add one more, a class war. Every election, roughly half the population votes Democrat and the other half votes Republican. Now, I understand why the Republicans get 1% of the vote, the richest 1%. That other 49%, someone will have to explain to me. <laughs> if you can look at a crime where everything points to one answer and not see it, you're a dumbass. And if you can look at the deficit and not see that the problem is that the rich stop paying taxes, you're a Republican. <laughs> and... And before you accuse me of equating the Casey Anthony verdict with Republican thinking, save your breath. I am. I am. I'm equating them. I'm saying if you're a working class American who still votes Republican, then you don't get to bitch about that verdict. They were all now, Democrats. I, I would be more, I, I am sympathetic to the poor people, but I would be more sympathetic if I didn't also think, because in this country, poor people never blame rich people. They want to be rich people. They want to become so would you if you the wanted nasty to be poor. rich fucks. It's a great country. So you would want to be the same if you were poor? Okay. If it could keep you from feeling but, like, you know, if, like a, if, a criminal uh, or a pariah, of course you would want to be anything right. that but wasn't if, but a if you are, But if you are wishing that you could be the one spraying the crystal, mm -hmm. you know, you're only, you're sort of Human that guy. Nature. Except without the money. Human nature. Michael but it Jackson. Would be, right. Human I mean, nature. It, who acts like this? Everybody doesn't act this way. This wouldn't happen in Sweden because they're just not as obsessed with money. I can't imagine ABBA putting out a record called Get Rich or Die Trying. <laughs> but you don't give up anything. You I give up more than I earn. <laughs> I run five charities. Right, but I'm you involved were in, a lot, in so many so philanthropic matter. and social and political, semi-political. Right. But you I, still have millions. Well, you need more than that. <laughs> I'm happy to pay more taxes. If that's the next question. We've squeezed the middle class. I mean, people have to ask, why is this woman peeing in a cup? You know, it's because we work backwards from the rich have to get theirs. They got to get 90% of the pie right away. The stock, the stock price of a company can't just be good. It always has to go up every year. So what about a company that's already doing well? You know, McDonald's is already selling a shitload of hamburgers. How do they get more, how do they squeeze more profit and have the stock go up? Well, the only place to squeeze is the people. So it winds up that somebody has to pee in a cup because they are, their productivity is getting squeezed ever more. But here's the thing about squeezing people and keeping them insecure. It virtually ensures that our long-term major problems never get fixed because reducing the debt or repairing our infrastructure, or most importantly, halting climate change, requires long-term thinking, which is something you can't really do when the wolf is always at the door. Bangladesh will be underwater in 20 years. I'm underwater today. Whole Foods, I just wanna get some food in my hole. <laughs> and that's just how the Koch brothers like it, to have people so caught up in today's problems we never have time for tomorrows. I, I, I hate to be a conspiracy theorist, but I swear to God, I think it's in the interest of corporations to keep the people stupid. And the best way to keep the people stupid is by having the people who inform them be even stupider. The GI Bill, which was really what they hate, it's government forcing corporations to do the right thing. Somehow that wasn't awful to that generation. Government said to corporations, these guys who just fought the war so you mm -hmm. could have a business, mm -hmm. do the right thing and right. give them the discount rate. That's right. But they forced them to do it. That's right. When you, if they, they knew that if you left it to corporations, they wouldn't have done the right, right thing. Because this Walter Reed thing is bad because they privatize it, because they outsourced it to corporations which have no soul, which only care about the bottom line, which only care about greed. At least government workers might have a conscience. Corporations never do. This is Dick Fold of Lehman Brothers. What a Dick Fold. <laughs> he personally made $500 million in subprime mortgages, and he gets to keep it while you and I pay off his bad bets. Barack Obama quote of the last couple of weeks, talking about Wall Street, he said, there's no difference between Wall Street and Main Street. We rise and fall together. 
I thought Rush Limbaugh was on drugs. Are you kidding? There's no difference. Did you see the hearings this week? There's no difference between Wall Street and Main Street. Some people are making $500 million a year, mm -hmm. and some people, a lot of people, are trying to get a second job at a yogurt shop. Mm -hmm. right. How can he talk like that? Look at this, the very essence of America. And I thought, how ironic, because this is on the Wall Street Journal. There is not a story, a article, a sentence, a word in this newspaper that is really about the sacrifice that people need to make in America. This is all about greed. Fuck them. <laughs> The fact that he just caught on to this in an anecdotal fashion does not make him a hero. That's what the show tries okay. to do. Well, but what's so wrong with the show is that he's not turning around and then changing, changing the, the practices, right? What's that's, wrong with the show is the his head is not on a pike. So no, I don't think we should put all the bankers to death. Just two. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's not technically legal, but let's look at the upside. If we killed two random, rich, greedy pigs, I mean killed, like blew them up at halftime at next year's Super Bowl, <laughs> or left them hanging on the big board at the New York Stock Exchange, you know, as a warning with their balls in their mouth, I think it would really make everyone else sit up and take notice. <laughs> this crisis is rooted in greed, and if two deaths shocked a society of 300 million into acting decently enough to avoid this in the future, well, they'd die as heroes. <laughs> and you know, it's not like collateral damage isn't built into our assessment of things. Cars kill almost 50,000 people a year, but we accept that as a fair price for being able to get around without riding on top of an animal. <laughs> So two dead bankers really starts to look like a bargain. And isn't that what they love? Bargains. I'm, I'm just, this just struck me because Obama's trying to make this grand bargain right now with the Republicans about how we're going to solve our fiscal problems. Isn't the reason we can't make a grand bargain because these people will not sacrifice anything. They love the country. They love the guys who pick up grenades for it, but they won't give up an inch. You can pry my private jet from my cold, dead hands when you take it from my hangar. You're concerned that 36% of people in Louisiana have a gun and 10% in Hawaii. I'm concerned that 36% of people in this country, 1% of pe people in this country control 36% of the wealth. That's the real problem. I agree. And, 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 and by the way, at a point, the other 99 are going to have the guns if we right. keep going in that direction, okay? Well, uh, I read your, that's, your great article, right. which is called Why We Should Hate the Rich. Well, not quite. We, I put it, it more politely. It was called uh, The Rise of the Super Elite and Why They're Leaving You Behind. Close. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why I got out of it, is why you should hate the rich. You know, this is the college admission scandal everybody is talking about. I have shocking news for everyone here tonight. Rich people cheat and their kids are fucking stupid. Look, just look at the faces of these kids and just try and turn away. Hi, I'm Bill Maher for Save Our Children. Each day, two up to three of America's finest young people are crippled by the devastating effects of the estate tax. This is my friend Charles, Charles Peddington III. Charles' life has been turned upside down. He was expecting an inheritance of $7.9 million. As it stands, he'll be lucky to get 6.2. Do you want to be the one to tell him? Well, now you can help repeal the estate tax by sponsoring a Republican congressman for as little as $2,000 an election cycle. That's less than the price of a tank of gas. <laughs> Won't you call the number on your screen? Hello? Charles, we're red. <laughs> if you won't save our richest 1%, who will? <laughs> Worry that I had, I love this, wandered into legal jeopardy. <laughs> yes, poor people commit crimes. Rich people <laughs> wander into legal jeopardy. New rule, instead of buying a $500 face cream made out of caviar, just pee on poor people. 
or kick a homeless man and say, why are you such a loser, loser? I mean, really, you're rubbing caviar on your face? Then again, who can argue with the results? Because this is a show where the boy, it's basically the prince and the pauper. You know, the king goes in disguise among the peasants, among his people, and finds out he's a huge cock. He's a prick. And he doesn't even know it. You know, the guy, I saw one where the guy works for White Castle. And he's shocked that the people who work for him have a, have a low morale, as if working for White Castle's fantastic. Why would they? But how'd you like to be briefly introduced to a millionaire? Wouldn't you like that? You can touch his garments. <laughs> and people watch this shit and find it inspirational. It's why they fawn over Donald Trump when he flirts with running for president every four years, even though he spends the rest of his time letting 18 people kiss his ass on TV before he fires all but one of them. I know, I know, it's just a TV show. But it does reinforce the stupid idea people have that rich people would love us and share with us if only they got to walk a mile in our cheap plastic shoes. But they're the reason the shoe factory moved to China. We have this fantasy that our interests and the interests of the super rich are the same. Like somehow the rich will eventually get so full that they'll explode. <laughs> and the candy will rain down on the rest of us. <laughs> like there's some kind of pinata of benevolence. But here's the thing about a pinata. It doesn't open on its own. You have to beat it with a stick. <laughs> Hey, but, but, but why can't they have, why can't they own that? You know, have some of that Charlie Sheen swagger. <laughs> you know, just say, yes, redistribution of wealth. We're for it. Mm -hmm. Death panels, we're for it. This week was the 10th anniversary of the Bush tax cuts. And I saw Tim Pawlenty, who apparently is the adult in the Republican field, <laughs> take it to an even greater level about how we should just throw more money to the rich. It, isn't the one thing that has taken this country down just, just always catering to the greed of rich people and exacerbating this giant wealth gap? <laughs> America's rich aren't giving you money, they're taking your money. Between the years 1980... <laughs> between the years 1980 and 2005, 80% of all new income generated in this country went to the richest 1%. Let me put that in terms that even you fat-ass teabaggers, sorry, can understand. Hey, let's talk about that. Say 100 Americans get together and order a 100 slice pizza. The pizza arrives, they open the box, and the first guy takes 80 slices. <laughs> but it yeah. seems to me like this country's broke and in, yes. and in hoc. And yes. that's really the, the root of the problem. That's right. Is that we're so much in debt and yeah. getting more in debt that at some point the foreign countries might call in those markers and then we'd really be screwed because, you know, we'd find out that we'd, you know, then, then our money would be worthless. So it seems like there's one place where there is money and that's rich people. They made out very well during the, during not just the Bush years. That's right. But the Clinton years, That's too, because right. he was a corporatist That's Democrat. Right. Right. And Reagan and Bush That's won right. before then. Since, like, That's 1980, right. everybody else's wages have been stagnant. Right. I saw the, the statistics from the Bush recovery, the 2002 to 2006 recovery. Yeah, there was something like 800 and something billion dollars of wealth created. Like, three-quarters of it went to the top 1%. Yes. These people, I think, have to give it up. How else do you sell trickle-down economics? <laughs> How else does that sound good? They're practically saying, we're pissing on you. <laughs> That's <laughs> trickle. <laughs> we're gonna get a trickle. <laughs> They're saying, we have all the money. <laughs> if we drop some, that's yours. That would be, whatever we can't get out the door as we're stealing into the night, that would be your portion. Well, how does that sound good unless you, like Reagan, sell the optimism of it, that you will be one of the pissers, not the... 
You know, that theory was that, you know, the industrious good people, the entrepreneurs, the successful ones, they're ones who should have it all. It's the moochers who are fucking everything up. You know who else was a big fan of Ayn Rand? Uh, Alan Greenspan. Mm -hmm. Let me read his quote. He said, creative individuals, the good people, an undeviating purpose and rationality, sorry, and undeviating purpose and rationality achieve joy and fulfillment. Parasites who persistently avoid either purpose or reason perish as they should. So if you wonder about where this stuff comes about cutting heating oil for the poor, that's where it comes from. They perish as they should. Is that these public workers get six weeks vacation and this infuriates private workers. Why? Because America, unlike every other country in the world, gets almost no paid vacation. Right. And somehow, instead of being mad at the, at the corporations and saying, you know what, we want six weeks vacation too, they'd rather drag other people. That's exactly right. Look, Is it really that radical to suggest slightly trimming the tax break on corporate jets? It seems like a reasonable idea given that A, people who buy corporate jets are filthy rich, and B, I don't need a B. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is a country of the rich, by the rich, for the rich, where every day it sees our laws and culture cater more to wealthy people. Tax breaks, industry written laws, bailouts, deregulation, all of it goes to making the lives of the rich just a little bit cushier. Oh, I'm sorry, did I say rich? I meant job creators. <laughs> yes. That's actually a prevailing theory on the right, that Obama's rhetoric towards Wall Street has been so hostile, it has created an uncertainty in the business community because he called them fat cats once, and they're still suffering from some sort of jobs-creating disorder. <laughs> like he burst into the bathroom while they were trying to pee, and now they can't go at all. <clears throat> when did the business community in America become so sensitive that we have to treat them like some sort of rare, exotic animal? Don't startle them, or they'll fly away. <laughs> We need to soothe them so they can nest here and lay their magic eggs full of jobs. <laughs> well, I mean, Why, you know, the rich people always say, if you give us the money, we'll create jobs. That's right. Why can't we have a system where we say, okay, you create jobs, you get to keep a lot of your money. If you don't, we're going to tax that. But if you create okay. jobs with it like you complain, like you pretend to do. That's right. Or else we'd tax it if you don't create jobs. I think that. They are the boogeymen. And you know what? Somehow in the Republican lexicon now, the uh, Frank Luntz world, rich people has become synonymous with job creators. They're not rich people anymore. They're always job creators, which is bullshit, isn't it? They're not job creators. <laughs> but his big claim to fame is that he's a businessman. And in America, saying you're a businessman automatically makes you better than anyone who's not a businessman. Obama never ran a business. He was a community organizer, helping poor people. Where's the money in that, stupid loser? <laughs> I remember reading that, I think it was Apple, that if they made everything here in the United States, they'd still make 50% profit, which is like what cocaine dealers make. <laughs> Americans need to have a Detroit moment where they realize they're pooling their money and wasting it on the richest guy in the room. The richest 1% hoard an obscene amount of the wealth while the average American has to save up to eat at Red Lobster on his birthday. Wake up, because somehow they're banging the porn stars and you're getting the crabs. <laughs>